Okay, good morning. Uh, today I'm going to show you a nifty thing that you can do with command blocks um, that is definitely going to help in terms of automating your games and such. So check this out. And a uh, special thanks to uh, Joel Mills, one of my fellow whoop, Minecraft mentors, who kind of turned me on to this over the weekend while we were playing on a mentor server that we have running or had running. So what I want to do is I want to, and uh, there's other ways to to execute this, but uh, I'm going to show you the simplest, and then we'll talk about others as we move forward. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a command block, and it's actually going to be a repeating command block, okay? And I'm going to place the command block. Now, here's the thing. So for a repeating command block, I can set it that it, uh, is always active. Now, this can be wonderful and it could be uh, horrible at the same time, depending on what command you're executing. I did make the grave mistake the other day of um, of having it always active and summoning a zombie, and it flooded or spammed the game with zombies, and I couldn't get out of it. And you know, you'll experience the joys of that sometimes on purpose, sometimes unintentionally. But what I'm going to do this time is I want to set a command block that is going to always detect um, underneath you for a certain type of block. And if that block exists, it's going to do something. Okay. In this case, let's use, um, let's see, what block should we use? Should be probably something not so, um, let's see, stained glass. Whoops. <clears throat> Let's see, I'll give myself a stained glass and I'll say number four and we'll see which that is because that's going to be a different, a specific color of stained glass. So that gave me a white stained glass. Let me just see if I did that right. I don't think I did actually. Give at self stained glass one and then number four. Okay, that's yellow. So the, the one meant it was just giving me one stained glass. The four after it meant that it was specifically giving me the ID four, which is the yellow stained glass, okay? So for example, if I put a stained glass, yellow stained glass right there, and I set this, that any time this is beneath me, something's gonna happen, okay? So I'm gonna set a command here, and the command is gonna be um, execute, for all, so in other words, this is going to execute whatever this command is for any or all players. Um, and actually, now that I think of it, I believe and hope that it's only when each player is on. It should be when it's on the yellow block. Now it's going to execute this for the player where they are. Okay, it's going to detect. Okay, now these squigglies without any number after them just mean exactly like where I am. I could have done. Squig, you know, tilde zero, zero, zero would have meant the same thing. If I did it as, um, you know, different numbers than this, it would have been somewhere else in the map relative to where I am. It's going to detect, yes? Do I need a slash yeah. for the command block? Yeah. No. Good question, though. When you're making command blocks, you don't use the slash. The command if I'm doing it in the command line, would have needed the slash. So keep that in mind for all command blocks. You never need to start with the slash. So I'm going to detect now where I am for the X, but negative 1, and then where I am for the, the Z. So what would the negative 1 here imply or indicate? Where am I looking? Where am I looking if it's 0, negative 1 relative to me? It's going to be like under me, right? So in other words, that's where I was saying if that um, the the that uh, the, 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 what do I want to detect? I want to detect stained glass. Um, and what number was that? Four. Okay. So if there's stained glass four right beneath me, one one block beneath me, it's going to do something. So let's say for this purpose, I want to have it jump my guy up in the air. So I'm going to do teleport. Um, you know, where I am for the X will stay the same, and let's say tw 30 in the air, and then zero for the Z. Now, who's uh, hopefully that was all I need. I think it is. Let's see if that works. So again, 
we're executing a command for any player that 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 this impacts where they where they are it's going to detect right under them if there's stained glass 4 which is that yellow one and if so it's going to teleport them up 30 blocks so in theory if i did that right i should teleport 30 blocks in the sky okay now um, that's kind of neat. Now, anywhere that I put one of these yellow blocks, it's going to do that. Now, the only, the only um, thing to take into account here is because I'm doing it based on this uh, command block right here, I believe, if I understand the math right, this command block is um, going to affect everything for six chunks around it, I believe. And I believe that's, I don't know, how many? 16 blocks for one chunk. 16 blocks for one chunk? Yeah. So if I'm correct, it's 16 times 6 blocks around it. So if you're creating a mini game and this is the area and everything, all these yellow blocks are going to be in that area, it would be fine. If you want to go beyond that, um, another thing Joel showed on that server that I'm talking about was a ticking area. Anybody familiar with the ticking area? Because I need to kind of learn that or you need to learn that part which isn't too complex but if I set up a ticking area anywhere in the map and have these command blocks that are going to be executed anywhere in the map as long as the ticking area keeps the command block alive so to speak it'll work got it so now other thoughts that I had about this and again it would have to be within the area that's defined unless we have it in a ticking area I was thinking in the past, most people for like a checkpoint would have it always um, reset the checkpoint based on, you know, a, a separate command block. If we made one command block that any time I step on one of these yellow stained glass, maybe it changes the spawn point. Let's see if that works. So instead of TP30, I'm going to try to just say spawn point, and I don't know if this part will work, but at the near, nearest player. Let's see if that does in fact change the spawn point. Oh, okay, it set my spawn point. Okay, but it, it keeps doing it, I guess, as long as I'm on this. But, so see how it's five, oh, bye Zach. See how it's five, uh, 56427. Now let's see if this one changes. Yeah, so now my spawn point's changed. So in theory, if I had a parkour or something map where I wanted to have several checkpoints in that area, I can do it in one command block now instead of multiple. Got it? Do you see how many different things you could accomplish with this now? So basically all, and, and what if I, what I did the other day for fun was I built a, like a bouncy house. So I created a huge structure and I made different command blocks teleport me different heights. And the whole floor was these different colored things. So anytime I walked, I would be thrown in the air. And, and I was my goal was to actually then create it as like a sort of like a, a jumpy parkour type thing where I had to make it to the top. Kind of like, um, what's that? Uh, do people still play doodle jump? Oh, yeah. Be kind of like doodle jump. So anyway, we'll stop there for now. But hopefully that gives you some cool ideas about what you can do with command blocks and the detect command.